Hey, welcome back. Are you using Tailwind as your CSS framework for your next awesome application? Do you want to learn how to extend Tailwind by writing your own plugins? If so, excellent, because that's exactly what we're doing today. Let's get to it. All right, before we get into writing our own Tailwind CSS plugin, let's talk about why we would want to in the first place. If you've used Tailwind CSS before, you'll know that it has many different utilities already provided for you. So things like the grid, flexbox, um, typography elements, and things like that, they are all included for you. But sometimes you may run into a situation where Tailwind CSS just doesn't provide what you want to do. And in this case, Tailwind CSS provides a really powerful framework for allowing you to write your own plugins to extend the capabilities of the framework. And this is a core feature of the framework, making it really well thought out and a first class citizen in the Tailwind CSS ecosystem. And today we're gonna walk through how to create your own Tailwind CSS plugin. To learn more about how to write our own CSS plugin, we can look at the documentation on the Tailwind CSS website by scrolling here to writing plugins. And the docs here are pretty good. You know, they will tell you exactly what to do, but sometimes it's useful to actually see it done in person. So let's go ahead and do that. To show you my setup, I'm gonna open Visual Studio Code and we're gonna take a look at one of the projects that we built in an earlier video called Good UI. And in this project, it is a Next.js application that has Tailwind CSS already pre-configured. And the project simply just has one page with a single component built from the Tailwind CSS library. Let's take a look at the code and then we'll get into writing our own plugin. So our tailwind.config.js file doesn't have any customizations to it whatsoever. So we've left everything completely blank, completely default. Our post CSS config file simply just processes our tailwind CSS file and loads tailwind CSS into our index.css. And here we are just including the base utilities and components of the Tailwind CSS library. So we haven't added any custom code yet. And finally, if we look at our index.js, which is our Next.js page component that's gonna render the UI, and we'll see a bunch of Tailwind CSS classes, but all of these are the default ones that are provided from the framework and the component I got from the Tailwind CSS UI library. Now the plugin that I wanna write today for Tailwind CSS is gonna allow us to use CSS named colors. And if you're not familiar with what named colors are in CSS, it is a property of CSS that allows you to specify a name instead of an RGB or a hex code for your um, color. And at the moment, Tailwind CSS does not have the capability for you to add your own named colors. Uh, you could if you just wanted to um, you know, create a class yourself, but where's the fun in that? Let's create a new file and we'll call it, uh, save it, and we will call it namedcolors.js. And we want this to be a JavaScript file. And within this file, the first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to bring in the Tailwind plugin component from the Tailwind CSS library. So this is gonna look like const plugin equals, and we're gonna require Tailwind CSS plugin. Now we're ready to create our plugin. And the way we do this is we simply have a single export. So we're gonna say module exports, and this is going to be the plugin that we export. So we're gonna call plugin, and then we'll pass with options because we may want to allow the user to pass in some options when they do call this plugin. And this with options method is going to take in an anonymous function. So we'll say um, anonymous function. And for our example today, we're not gonna be passing in user options. So we'll leave that as empty. But what we will do is within this anonymous function, we are going to return our plugin. And the way this works is we simply return another anonymous function. So we'll say return function. And in this function, we implement the logic for our Tailwind CSS plugin. Now within this function, what we are gonna pass in is the elements that we want to change about our Tailwind CSS configuration. And there's a couple of different ones we can do. So we can change the base styles, the theme, 
uh, add components or add utilities. And I think since we're building this component that allows you to set a named color, I think adding it to our utilities package is going to make the most sense. So here we're just going to pass in add utilities. And now within our function, all we do is call the add utilities method. So we'll say add utilities. And then we simply pass in the new styles and the new classes that we want to add to our utilities package of our Tailwind CSS installation. Let's go ahead and add one to make sure that we are on the right path. So this add utilities function takes in an object and the object is a list of styles that we want to create. So if we take a look at our code and take a look at the named CSS colors, uh, there's 140 of them, as I mentioned earlier. Let's just implement one for now. So let's take a look at this uh, coral color. So let's create a new class for our Tailwind CSS installation that allows us to set the background color to coral. So we'll say add a class of BG coral, and then we're going to pass in an object that is going to represent that background color. And in our case, it's just going to be background and the background color is going to be coral. So far, so good. Um, we've created this plugin, but we are not using it. So if we were to go into our code and try to call this class, we wouldn't see any changes. And we can test that by going into our index.js file and let's add BG coral, hit save, and let's go into our browser and see if it does anything. It shouldn't, but let's test. We'll refresh and we don't see any changes. But if we go back into our code and actually load this plugin by going into our tailwind.config.js file and in this plugin section, we're, we are going to require our named colors plugin. So let's say require and then our named colors plugin. We'll hit save. Now when we go and refresh our page, we should see the background color of our application change to the coral color and we do. So we can now see that within our component, the background color here has changed to coral. And if we inspect the element and find BG coral, we'll see that it was applied. And here we see BG coral and the background color is coral. Excellent. Now to add the rest of the named colors, there's 140 of them. And I think manually typing them by hand is going to be error prone and is going to be a waste of our time because Tailwind CSS plugins are JavaScript and we can actually speed this process up significantly by just writing a little bit of JavaScript code. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's open up Visual Studio Code, go back into our namedcolors.js file and let's add a little bit of code to automatically format all of the named colors that we have. Now for time's sake, I've already created an array that holds all of the named colors. So I'm gonna paste it in here and you'll see we go all the way from you know black down to yellow green, which if we compare in the browser, we start at black and we go all the way down to yellow green. And actually there's Rebecca Purple that we forgot to add. So let's go ahead and add that one as well. So we'll just add it by pasting it in here. And you'll probably notice that I have black and white uh, commented out. And the reason for this is Tailwind CSS already has BG white and BG black. So if we were to include it in our named colors plugin, it's going to cause a conflict and it's going to complain. So for our sake, we are going to omit black and white and, uh, you know, rely on Tailwind CSS to provide BG white and BG black for us. Now let me collapse this so that we can see more of our code. And the way that we're gonna automate this process for us is let's create a new variable and let's call it named styles. And we'll just set it to an object. And what we can do here is we're just gonna loop over the named colors and transform it to the format we want and add it to our named styles object. And the way that this is gonna look is, so we'll say named colors for each and then we'll, we'll capture the color, which is just going to be the string of the named color. And we'll make it an arrow function. 
And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna use our name styles object, add a key to it, and the way that we're gonna dynamically add the key is by using this um, array notation. And in here we can use string literals. So we'll say uh, dot bg dash, and then we'll capture the, the variable and the variable is going to be our color. So we're gonna create, so for each one of these uh, colors that we have in the array, we're gonna create a background element for it. And we're gonna call it bg dash, whatever the color name is. And we're gonna set it to an object that has the background of our color. And then another thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do the same thing for our text color because we wanna be able to set both a named background color and a named text color. So we'll say named styles, and then again, we'll use the um, string literals and we'll say text color. And this time we'll set the color to color. So now when we bring in our plugin, this function is gonna run, and then we can remove our add utilities object that we hard coded, and we'll just replace it with our name styles. And what this is gonna do is it's going to take the loop of all of our named colors and create a new style with the background dash the color and the text dash the named color and set it properly. And by doing this, we already have this plugin loaded in our tailwind.config.js file. So by saving it and going back into our application, we should be able to see that the bg-coral still works, but then we should also be able to use any of the other CSS uh, named colors. And let's go ahead and test that out and see if it works. So if we go back into our Next.js application, we have this bg-coral already set. And if we refresh the page, that's just to make sure nothing got uh, messed up, we can see that we still have the BG Coral color implemented. But we can also change it. So let's say, let's change BG Coral to that Rebecca Purple. And we now see the Rebecca Purple color appended. And if we look at our code here, we'll see the background color as Rebecca Purple. And we can do this with any of the named colors. So if we go in here, let's pick a random one. Um, how about this? Uh, olive drab color, copy and paste it. Boom. And we should be able to do the same exact thing for our text as well, because remember, we added the text dash named color as well. So let's go into this, uh, how to build your own string. And let's add a custom text color to it. So we'll say text and let's say, uh, let's pick another one here. Uh, how about magenta? So we'll say text dash magenta, and there it is. And wow, that, that looks really bad on the eyes. Let's pick something maybe lighter. Uh, how about this light golden rod yellow and change our text. Boom. So that looks, that's a little better. But what I'm trying to show here is that we've created a Tailwind CSS plugin that allows us to use any of the named colors and it simply works. <clears throat> and now we don't have to worry about writing custom CSS code if we wanted to just use one of those named colors. It's already provided for us. Um, it's automatically gonna purge as well. So if you have set up purging for your CSS, when you go to production, any of the unused named colors are gonna be discarded and your CSS file is gonna be much smaller. So that works great. Now, one final thing I wanna show you is if you don't wanna write your own named colors plugin, I've actually created one for Tailwind CSS and published it yesterday. So if you go to NPM, uh, I have this plugin called Tailwind CSS named colors, and uh, you can install it by running NPM install at auto XYZ forward slash Tailwind CSS named colors. But let's go ahead and add this plugin to make sure that it works with our application. So I'll go back to Visual Studio Code and I'll open up a new terminal window. We'll run npm install at auto xyz forward slash tailwind css dash named colors. And now we should be able to simply go in here and change this require statement to import at auto xyz tailwind css named colors and the result should still be the same. So to recap, to create a tailwind css plugin, all you need to do is import the 
uh, Tailwind CSS plugin library that's included with Tailwind CSS. Then you export the plugin and with options and we'll go over how to pass different options in a different video. But then you simply return a function and choose what styles you want to add to your Tailwind CSS configuration and how you want to enhance it. And then the final thing you'll need to do in your Tailwind config is require that plugin and everything else is done automatically for you. And that's really all there is to it when it comes to creating Tailwind CSS plugins. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, I would really like it if you liked and subscribed to the channel. Otherwise, I will see you next time.